Hey guys, Clayt here. In my first Warcraft Vlogs video, I've shown you guys the basics of getting started at Warcraft Vlogs and kind of how you can start looking at your own performance and comparing yourself to others. Now in this video, let's get more specific about Fear Warriors and let's go over the top 5 most common mistakes that I see on Warcraft Vlogs and things that you can easily find out for yourself. So on the first page that we have here, I'm going to look at the cast for people's cooldowns and their battle cry rotation essentially. Let's go over exactly how you get here. First, you're going to go to Analyze, Timelines, Cast. Make sure these are picked up the settings. And of course, you want to filter it down to your actual character, right? So I'm looking at this warrior right here. So in his opener, he's using Realm Collapsing Futures while he's using Battle Cry and Avatar. This is a mistake because he should be using this ring after he rampages. So he can also buff it with Enraged Buff, right? So he's missing around whatever percent damage, around probably around 40 to 50% damage on the ring in addition. Not only that, but... He casts his battle cry at 0.58 seconds, and that means this Fury Slash, which is set less than 7 seconds after he casts battle cry, this spell that he presses here is actually buffed by battle cry. So for him, instead of a Fury Slash here, this should have been Odin's Fury. That's a pretty big drastic thing to be casting a Fury Slash and battle cry instead of an Odin's Fury. So definitely for his rotation, you know, there's two easy mistakes that I can see right off the bat: Ring of Futures in the wrong time, and why is this not an Odin's Fury? Right, so for example, let's take a look at my opener. Um, very similar, right? Analyze, timelines, cast, right? Make sure you filter to your character. And then you come down here. You can see I pop up my cooldowns and then I cast Rampage. And then while I'm mid GCD during the Rampage, I cast Ring of Classing Futures because it's off global cooldown, right? And then I cast Draft of Souls, Raging Blow, Bloodthirst, Odin's Fury, and Raging Blow. I actually get both Odin's Fury and Raging Blow into opener, but that's because I have Bloodlust in the beginning and I have the Troll Racial. But even if I didn't, the Odin's Fury is correct here, right? So you want to really make sure that since this is such a big part of our DPS and it's such a short time frame, you want to make sure that you get your battle cry perfectly every single time. So another way to check your battle cry uptime instead of just hovering over it and then subtracting, adding in the seconds, which is fine, you can always just go open this one over here. You can go to analyze, timelines, buffs, and then you can look at all the times that you have buff times up, right? You can check your enrage. Whenever it was up, you can you know keep track of the time and then compare it back to the cell cast here. Of, of course, you can do it with every single buff you have. So you can do it with Battle Cry. Same thing, you can hover over the spell to see when it starts and when it ends. So in addition to your Battle Cry cooldowns rotation, another thing you want to keep track of is just your Battle Cry uptime or how many times you cast Battle Cry in a fight. So for example, this person came up to me with questions about just not doing enough damage, right? So somebody else pointed out he just didn't cast that many Battle Cries, right? This is a two minute, a 49 second fight, he has conversion phase, and he only casts battle cry three times. Now that is way too little, of course. You know, there's a huge gap here from 45 seconds to you know two minutes and like 12 seconds where he didn't cast battle cry at all. He could have easily cast two more battle cries in the meantime, so that was a lot of damage waste out on. And you definitely do not want to hold your battle cry for that long. A lot of people don't even hold battle cry at all, or even just one GCD. Of course, I've said in my previous videos that I hold Battle Cry, you know, for a set amount of time for Odin's Fury and Draft of Souls, but it's actually not that even that bad if you just don't even hold on to a cooldown. And you just, as long as there's no fight mechanics that are going to impede you from carrying out your rotation during your Battle Cry window, some people just pop it on cooldown. So you definitely want to make sure you avoid this, right? This huge gap of just not using Battle Cry at all, not because of mechanics, but because you forgot. That's obviously a very easy thing to see. So of course you can just go to analyze, tables, damage done, and you can you can click on the buffs here and it'll show you all the damage that you do when you have a buff up, right? So if you just click on the battle cry buff up, it'll show you all the damage that you're doing. You can also use this in the other way. You can also negatively target it. So if I click it again, it'll show me all the damage that I did outside of battle cry. And if you want to cancel it, you can just click it a third time and it'll be cleared out. All your filters will be cleared out. Now, another common mistake that people are making that's very easy to see is just your Frothing Berserker uptime, right? And the biggest thing about Frothing Berserker uptime, which you guys can obviously check by looking at people's buff uptimes, right? You can look at their analyzed tables. You can look at their Frothing Berserker uptime, right? You can look at it in range uptime. But an easy way to see where you're making the mistakes and or why it's high and low is you come here to analyze tables resources. And you want to make sure that this is checked. It's default on hit points, but you want to turn it into rage. Right? And this is what's going to really help you see whether or not you're pushing to 100 rage every time before you use Rampage, right? Making sure that you're actually proccing Frothing Berserker every time you use Rampage. 
But all you have to do is just hover over these, right? If it's close, you can just hover over the points and you can see, all right, 98, per, 98 rage, right? So mistake there. And what is this? This is going to be 98 rage. So right off the bat, other than the first rampage, his second and third rampages were all not used at 100 rage. You can also see here, here's another three more rampages that were not used at 100% rage. Definitely really, really hurting his frothing berserker uptime. Of course, if you see something like this, this is very likely because he was dumping his rampage before he's battle cry. That's fine. But when you see consecutive th times of it happening over and over, right? 98.5 rage when you cast rampage, 96 rage when you cast rampage. You know, there's there's so many peaks where it doesn't hit 100 rage, right? Something that will look good and you want to attain for is when you look at this page, you want it to be something more like this, right? You want it to be hitting 100 rage and then dropping down. Obviously, the thinner your peaks are, the better. That means you weren't sitting on it for too long and you weren't forgetting to hit Rampage. Of course, it's fine because, you know, hitting a 100 Raged Rampage versus a hitting a 100 Raged Enraged Raging Blow isn't that much difference in damage, but you, you obviously don't want it to be too long if, if possible. Now, the fourth thing that you guys can easily track of, and then once again, we're back to the analyze timelines and casts, is just how many times are you hitting a Furious Slash, right? This should never happen. You should never be hitting two Furious Slashes twice in a row. There's no reason to, because by the time you can hit the second Furious Slash, your Bloodthirst is already off cooldown. This should never happen. It's an easy thing to check. It's an easy thing to fix, right? Just look at your cast and go, hey, well, I hit Furious Slash twice in a row there, or I hit Furious Slash twice in three GCDs. That shouldn't happen. Uh, so you definitely want to check on that and make sure that it's not happening in your cast. And if it is, you know, just go on dummy, practice rotation, and keep tracking back on the logs and making sure that you're not doing that. Of course, an easy way that you guys can be doing this, if you're spamming your skills too much, sometimes you'll just spam it too hard and then you just cast two fierce slashes in a row. But you do want to avoid that if possible. And the last thing that, you know, I see a lot of people get wrong is just their execute phase, right? There's, there's multiple ways you can get your execute phase wrong. One is, you know, you have the tier 19 sets, but you're still predominantly doing, you know, a bloodthirst, rage and blow and execute, which is an ideal because like I mentioned in my execute video, you really want to rely on your fear slash and bloodthirst to keep you in rage and have enough rage to spam executes. Now, another thing that you can do wrong with execute phase is just not having your execute in rage when you definitely can have it be in rage. All right, for example, right here, this guy used Battle Cry, right? He used Bloodthirst, which is fine, right? It gets enraged, hits the Execute to keep up his Darkness Axe, casts Trap of Souls, and then he casts six Executes before he casts a Bloodthirst. So why not try to get enraged during one of these casts? Because he's not going to be enraged for pretty much the entirety of, you know, these five Executes. So definitely there are improvements that a lot of people can make is that don't just, you know, when you have 100 rage, you don't just spam executes all the way down to zero, especially if you're not in rage, because I know he's not, because he's in rage proc there, and it dropped off somewhere between these two executes. Definitely take a look at your buff up times in your cast. So, for example, let's go look at his buff up times for in rage, right? During execute phase, I can guarantee you it's not that great. So, an easy way, if you don't want to look at it all like super spread out like this, you know, we have to scroll entirely, you can just go to analyze tables and buffs. And you can see the cast right here. So, I mean, he wasn't enraged this entirety, pretty much, of his execute phase. Only at the very end, this is probably when he got battle cry up again, that he got enraged again. Now, especially once you have the tier pieces, you definitely want to avoid that. You definitely can get enraged due to your fear slash buffing your bloodthirst to crit. And that's it for these top five common mistakes that fear warriors make that you can easily find in work of logs and easily check to see if you're making these and try to fix them. So I highly recommend you guys take a look at logs, take a look at the five things I just showed you, see if you're making these mistakes, and if you guys can fix them, it will be an easy boost to your DPS. As always, thanks for checking out the video, guys. Feel free to subscribe to the channel to see more content, and check out my new website, www.furywarrior.com. If you guys haven't, I'll make sure that anything that I find, any new updates on the PTR, I'll make sure that I'll include that on the site in the coming future. See ya.